Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Rick and in today's video, I want to delve with you in how you can perform a join in Power Query, but based on a date range. That is something that's not available in the user interface, but I think you'll like it. So there are situations where your data contains a date range where something is relevant. So to make that explicit, you could, for example, have a contract for a customer and that contract might be active in between a starting and an ending date. Or perhaps you're working with a campaign that runs from a certain date to a certain ending date. Now, if you if you have your transactions, you might want to add which campaign was active during that transaction. So the transactions table would have a date and the other table would show you the active campaigns. That's what we're going to look at today. Now, this particular concept was also available in our new book, the definite, uh, the definitive guide to Power Query M. And you can find that concept in parameters and custom functions. But what we're going to look at today is how we can build such a join by ourselves. So let's get right to it. So you so you can get uh, an idea of what I mean. So here on the screen, you can see an example table with campaigns. It has a campaign name, a campaign start date and a campaign end date. Now there's also a transactions table and the transaction table has a unique ID. It has a date, a description of what room was sold because this was a hotel business and an amount. Now our goal is to add a column here that shows which of the campaigns was active. And I'm going to show you two methods in this video. We're going to try to build our own custom join and we're going to transform the campaigns table so you can make a regular join. So those are the two. Let's, let's get to it. So if we want to make our own custom join, it's going to, it's going to challenge you a little bit in, in a way that you need to understand M. But how can we have a look at this? So what we could do is we could add a separate column. And the first step we're going to do to make a join is we're going to make a reference to the campaigns table. So I could write campaigns one, and I'm going to say like campaign name as a column name. If I press OK, you'll find that we add a new table. And this table is basically a copy of the campaigns table that gets added to each of the, the rows here for the for the column that we added. That's step one. Now, if we want to make sure that we only show the campaign name in which this date, uh, wh wh where this date had an active campaign. So, for example, the 6th of January. In the 6th of January, we would have the seasonal getaway specials. Well, if we want to return this, we're also going to need to be able to, to filter down the table in the campaign name column. So how can we do that? Do that? Well, a typical function we can use is table select rows. And the first condition is a table, which is already uh, what's out there. But then we need to filter it down to the relevant rows. Now, an initial attempt might be that you say like, okay, I want to make sure that the start date of the new campaigns table is smaller or equal to the date that we have here in the transactions table. Let's, let's start out like this and see if it works. So when we press enter and we preview here, you'll get an error message saying that the date of the record wasn't found. Now this is important because we need to understand what's happening here. So the reason why the date wasn't found is because we have an inner and an outer scope. So the table add column adds something to the transactions table and the table select rows functions that we call within the function to create a new column. It works on the context of the campaigns table. Now the reason why it's not so explicit here is that the each keyword is actually syntax sugar for a function with a single underscore as its parameter. So if we look at this, then we could change the each keyword for this. There we go. Uh, let me just remove this. And at the same time, we could do that for this each one as well. It's even more explicit. Let's see, we can have an underscore here and an underscore there. So we're still going to have the same problem, but now it's more explicit of what's happening. 
So what's happening is the following. Once we're within the table select rows function, the table select rows function wants you to provide a function and its second argument. Now we provide the function with an underscore here. And we say within the context of the campaigns table, look for the start date. And within that same context, also look for the date. Now, as you might remember, the campaigns uh, table does not have a date column. It only has the start and end date. To work around this, we're going to have to make it more explicit when we are referring to the inner context of the campaigns table and when we are referring to the outer context of the transactions table. Now, and how we can do that is we just give a different name to the underscore. So the transaction table could be a T and we could have a campaigns table with a C. Now, all we need to do is make sure that we refer to the start date from the campaigns table and the transaction date from the transactions table. And now if we preview this, you can actually see that that original table that we had is now filtered down to only the rows that meet our condition, where the start date is smaller or equal to the date. But if we go ahead over here, we see that there's more rows and more and even more. So this is a good first step, but we also need to make sure we filter for the end date. Now we can do that in the same way. So we could say like end, we could say from the uh, campaigns table, the end date needs to be bigger or equal to the the date in the transactions table. Here we go. And if we now click through here, we can actually see that we have a right filtering. We, we basically perform a join. And then if we want to return the, the campaign that was active, we can simply expand the table and click on the campaign name. And you got it right here. Now, if you want to make it even more specific so that you can keep your data type, we can go back here to the step that adds a new column. And as a last argument, we can add that the result will be of type table. And we want to return the, the campaign description, uh, description, and we, which is of a text type. Now let's double check if that was the actual name of the column. It's called campaign name. Okay. So it's not campaign description, but campaign name. And now if we go to the expanded step, we can see that we, first of all, we have the campaign names. Second of all, the null value here shows that there is not a single match for the 8th of February. And that is right, because if we look here, we have a campaign between the 1st and the 5th of February, and one between the 10th and the 16th of February. So that is method one. So in our book where we describe custom functions, I also delve into how you can create a custom function of this logic. And we're going to look at context and how you can make different references. So I recommend looking into the book if you want to learn more here. Now we're going to get on with the second method because this was method one. Another very useful method to perform exactly the same operation is instead of creating a join in this way, we could also adjust the campaigns table so that you can perform a regular left outer join. And to do that, we're going to want to adjust this table in a way that we're going to have a unique date for each of the dates a campaign name is active. And to do that, the first step is to create a custom column again. And in this case, we can call this one date. And our goal is to create a list of dates between the start and end dates first. There's a lot of ways we can do that. But for today, let's use the list dates function. The list dates wants to have a starting date as a first argument. It then needs to have the number of days to create for the list. Well, a useful function for this is duration days. And then we could basically say we have the ending date and we remove the starting date from it. And we always need to add one extra because otherwise we have a list that is too short. And as its last argument, it needs to step. And we're going to want to have a list of dates that increases with a single day with each step. And we can use the duration function for this, which is one day, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And then we close our brackets here. Now, if we press OK, we're going to get a list of dates. 
And for this first example, the list of dates ranges from the 1st until the 15th of uh, January 2023. Now that's great. We can expand this to new rows. And again, just like in our last example, we don't have the date uh, data type specified. So we could go back and as the very last argument of table add column, we could specify that we have a list of dates. And the way to do that is to type type. You open your curly brackets and you type type date and you close the, the bracket again. So the curly bracket indicates it's a list and by providing the text date in here, it also indicates that the values are of type date. And now when we go to expand, you will find that the date column is actually uh, retaining the data type. <coughs> okay, so what is left? So what's left is we can see that we have a unique date here uh, for all of the days the campaign is active. So we could now remove the, the other date columns. Perfect. And if we now go to the transactions table, you can go to home, merge queries, and you can make a very, very easy join on the campaigns to table where you grab the date and the date. And we can now simply perform a left outer join and have a campaign name here. And you get the exactly same result just in a different way. And I haven't tested it, but I think this second method might be the quickest of both. If you do get to test it, let me know your results in the comments below here as well. And if you want to learn more about the M language, I recorded a video on what our new book covers, but I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's a book of 750 pages. And we really think that the concepts that we explain uh, are going to benefit you in your M journey. Well, this is today's video. I hope to see you next time. And thanks for watching. Uh -huh.